Thank you. Hi, with Kukuletu Kele. One thing we know that also uh, follows a theme from entrepreneurship is education. And this time we're taking a look at the social change model, which is certainly most widely used leadership model for students worldwide. We'll take a look at how this is shaping the curricula as well as thought process for many business schools uh, from a leadership curricula perspective, especially here in South Africa. Joining us to tell us more about this is uh, Dean John Foster Pedley from the Henley Business School. Good to have you with us today. Thank you, Gugu. Great to be here. Fantastic. We're all excited about entrepreneurship. But many entrepreneurs also need to get some kind of formal training, right, in education, which is why institutions like yours is important. But tell us a little bit more about the many facets of social change and leadership. Well, that's a really, I mean, I was listening to the previous conversation. I was really quite taken with it. You can tell from my voice that I'm not a black guy, I'm a white guy. Okay, running a business school that is deeply involved in transformation. Now, what's interesting to me is that we can talk about transformation, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's all based on skills. You can't, you can't really transform anything if it doesn't deliver fantastically. So what we do as a business school is deliver skills to assist transformation. And developing skills is hard. So you mentioned the social change model. And what that really is, is trying to develop skills that aren't all about just being hard-nosed, business-like and being efficient. It's about being human as well. It's about being empathetic. It's about being true to yourself. And it's about contributing to society. So it's me we work the world and it's trying to develop change that transforms societies through business and through organizations mm. I, I like that thought process but in my mind i'm just being challenged by what we're seeing in developed economies because we usually take our lead and direction from them so in markets like the us and the uk where populism is a rising theme and trend how does that apply to how we need to really channel uh, some kind of a social change and be social leaders in environments where actually society might you know, not really be united. Well, that's a great point. But firstly, why are we so un- under-ambitious as to want to be like America True. or developed economies? We're sitting here in a continent that's evolving with remarkably bright and intelligent people, many of whom are underconfident about their own skills and underconfident about what Africa can become. And together we can create this phenomenal Africa. So we don't have to look to be like America. We're going to create something different. We're on a different vector. Mm. We'll take the best lesson from these developed economies. But we've got our own history and our own dynamism that's going to build a different form of Africa that's going to be internationally competitive and transnational. So the people here are going to be transnational. So one of the problems of populism is that that's what happens when you lose leadership or when you when you don't balance properly the needs of those people who you're dismissing from economic you know involvement for the sake of this great noble ambition of economic advancement Mm. but that comes at a cost with globalization and if you ignore that then you're going to have a backlash so true leadership is continually awake it's aware it's listening it's gathering feedback it's seeking criticism so you can build better models to understand and build a better solutions that that are more inclusive But you can't include people if you can't generate capacity or wealth. Money has to come from somewhere to pay for everything. And money should be our servant, not our master. We use money to develop develop better options for people. And that means training and development and skills, which Mm. is what is our focus at Henley. In the context of Henley within the Mm. South African environment, and as you said, being conscious to the fact that these leaders need to be transnational, how are we getting it right where business leaders are becoming agents of change? Well, it's not all business leaders, nor all public sector leaders are becoming agents of change. But what you're seeing is a minority of people <coughs> excuse me, who are actually getting a sense of this is about more than me. So if you want to be a leader, the first rule is you have to have an, an objective which is bigger than me. You have, to, you have to serve something greater than that. So you certainly see people who are building up, who are seeing society as an, a good balanced society, as something that's an outcome that we can create. But you can't create it by marginalizing anybody. And so what the good business leaders are doing, they're inclusive, they're listening, they're learning from other other organizations, but in themselves, they are learners. Mm. So the great leaders are continually learning. They don't have to look humble, you know, but they are learning. They're gathering information, changing, and always got this direction in themselves, this dynamism to build a, a better model, a better solution. They're restless. They're never comfortable. They say, I've done that. Now what can I do this better? Uh. That's leadership.
constantly in pursuit of perfection, always hungry uh, and always looking for more knowledge to gain. Can I just counter that? Please don't be perfectionist because it'll destroy you. None of us are form, form perfect. So mm -hmm. you've got to accept who we are. We, we've just got to do the best we've got, accept our imperfections and accept those as others and know that we're working to work together towards the same aim. So learn, learn, learn. That's a personal uh, message to me too. So uh, I'm taking my notes there, Dean. Thank you so much for your time. I certainly wish we could extend the show. Maybe we no should worries. try and get this to be a two-hour business show, right? Maybe the MD I, will agree. I think you should have a two-hour. <laughs> and thank you so much, Guru, for the privilege. Thank you very much. That was uh, Dean John Foster Pedley from Henley Business School updating us on uh, rethinking the way that we uh, look at the social change model. That's how we wrap up our view of Kaya Biz for today. It's been fantastic participating with you. Thank you so much to Beggy for his call. Tomorrow, all of this conversation continues and we bring you a special feature called The Pivot Point where we speak to property mogul Sisange Bulana about his entrepreneurial journey and some of the pivotal moments in his career. That's Kaiba's tomorrow from 5 to 6. It's just after